Hello everyone, what's up? In our third hobby community showcase, we will review models painted recently by 7 subscribers who are also members of our growing Discord server. This time we have 3 Horus Heresy models, 3 40k ones, and one from Adeptus Titanicus. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about either Weathering or the Horus Heresy, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell. I said last time that opening the video with the Black Shields tank from Rick had become a tradition. And here's another one. This time it's an eBay Rescue Vindicator, which was in pretty bad shape when he got it. Since Rick is a narrative gamer, his background for his entire force is that they are scavengers, getting what they can from the legions that they once used to belong to. Quite fitting for an eBay Rescue, don't you think? With this Predator tank, Rick experimented with washable black paint. This time he tried a combination of chipping fluid and liquid mask. This quest of his to continually try new techniques and products is precisely what I think makes his army so special. While the paint on the pred was faded, the Vindicator is full of hard-edged chips which allow you to see the white and blue of the 12th Legion, the World Eaters. The fact that you even have two sets of decals with the 12th Legion symbol showing through really blew my mind. Rick, I'm definitely going to imitate this at some point. Regarding the channel, Rick states that it has been a continual inspiration and has really set me thinking of crazy ideas that allow me to trial techniques and materials within my army. Well, Rick, right back at you. You have inspired myself and many other community members. Jack is a new member of our Discord community and one of the first members from Down Under. Given the strength of the 30k community in Australia, I hope you are not the last. Jack's Dark Angel Praetor is a departure from the norm for the First Legion. Doing something unconventional like this, namely a blood-soaked Son of Caliban, takes courage, and this is precisely the kind of hobby which I would like to encourage. Rather than tell him, aren't world eaters the ones supposed to be covered in blood, or something like that, Jack had a lot of positive feedback from others. And deservedly so. The attention to detail in elements like the basing is excellent. Regarding the experience, Jack writes that the most important lesson for him was going out of my comfort zone and risking the final result, so as to improve my skills. And about the community, he explains that the other members helped me stay on track and were a great help when it came to improving my painting. Great work, Jack, and we're glad to have you on board. Hugh is also a new member, and as you can see, he likes red knots. A discerning wargamer, he knows what the best weapon is for box threads. The Flamestorm Cannon. Here you have to try this in 30k as well. He explains that my sponge chipping video, my very first one if I'm not mistaken, drove him to try this technique here for the first time. I think that the textures that he has obtained as a result have taken these two dreads to the next level. Most importantly, Hugh tells us that he really enjoyed the sponging as his first bit of painting gives depth to the model and can help give the models a story. Regarding the community, Hugh adds that he spoke to Rick, who suggested adding some silver to give more character than just a black underneath. And he concludes, I can't wait to learn more and pick up more tips from everyone. Well, Hugh, you have explained in a few words what the channel and the community is about better than I ever could. Another usual suspect, you may remember James, from his sinister Death Guard Contemptor Dreadnought. This time he brings us a fetid blood drone, which is truly worthy of its name. As you can see, James has really gone the extra mile on this spawn of Nerval. First of all, you have the maggots on the base, which he made himself out of green stuff. Secondly, you have the toxic waste base itself. And lastly, the saliva dripping from the drone's biomechanical maw. Oh, and some leaves as well. All of these effects complement the paint job very nicely. And they help create a narrative for the model. Although this time there is no chipping, James has used enamels extensively to great effect both on the color shift metallics and on the green panels. Regarding the community, James writes that 
constant support and constructive criticism from the guys in the community really helped me get this project over the line and keep me on track with my weathering and stop me being lazy. Well, James, this is a superlative model, and I'm sure that any nerglings watching this will be cackling with glee. A channel veteran and third time entrant in our showcase, James brings us models from a different game every time, and this time it's 40k. As you can see, James has carefully applied chipping to all the metallics, including the breastplates, the shields, and some smaller details. This has greatly improved the realism of the piece, as has the use of enamels for shading. The telltale signs of acrylic washes, such as tight marks, are nowhere to be seen. My favorite element, however, is the use of pigments on the bases, which really makes the augrins more convincing as a whole. Regarding the process, James explains that he enjoyed painting larger models and the proportions of the sculpts. Additionally, he had a lot of fun playing around with the weathering powders and trying to reproduce a look of sandy, windswept basing with a brush. Regarding the community, James writes that he got a lot of good advice and experience from other hobbyists about use and application of weathering powders. It helped me better understand some of the applications and receiving feedback from other hobbyists helped me out a lot. Why, thank you, James. As a very active member of the community, and a mod, no less, you have helped me shape our little community into what it is now. Joseph is yet another new member of our Discord community, but as you can see, he's not new to either painting or miniature photography. Thank you for these awesome shots, Joseph. To begin with, this titan is a subject dear to my heart, as it belongs to Legio Infernus, originally known as Legio Sutrovora, same as my 28mm Warhound. The stencil work for the flames is excellent, and the appropriately scaled chipping is also very fitting. My favorite element, however, is the burn effect on the plasma blast gun. Great stuff. Regarding the channel, Joseph writes that his favorite video is the interview with Matt Murphy Kane and also the history of the Forge World painting style. He explains that he's tried to capture some of those styles into the Warhound, but that he also believes that, and I quote, some creative liberties should also be taken. Well, Joseph, I couldn't agree more. Given that I've just started collecting Adeptus Titanicus myself, I hope to see more of your engines walk soon. After a brief absence from the channel, Nick regales us again with some of his amazing work. This time it's a Death Guard Praetor in a very dark, gothic style, which I think conveys beautifully the tragedy inherent to the 14th Legion. Nick has combined oils and enamels to create some wonderful textures, both on the dirty ivory white plates and on the aged bronze thread. The pallid, ended-like flesh complements the rest of the paint job beautifully, and I think it's very fitting for the Death Guard. I would also like to mention the conversions that he's gone for, which I think are very tasteful. If I'm not mistaken, Nick has taken the limited edition Legion Centurion and swapped the arms, the head and the shoulder pads. Nicely done. If any of you want to own a model as beautiful as this, Nick is now a commission painter. As you can see, his work is not only technically excellent, but it also has a very strong artistic flair. So if you expect something more than painting by numbers from a commission, he's your guy. Now, before we conclude today's video, I have an announcement to make. As I have said repeatedly on social media this week, my Arquitor Bombard giveaway is about to take place, and I will only be considering entrants who are members of our Discord community. However, it will not actually be a giveaway as such, but a competition. Any hopefuls will have to take a quiz of my own creation, designed to test how well they've been paying attention at Weathering School. So if you're interested and you haven't yet joined us, hurry up, there are only a few spaces left. If you want to learn how to apply rust streaks, click on the video on the left. And if you want to see my entire weathering process step by step, check out the one on the right. That's all for now guys, but remember, keep it up and weather it out.